If you want to know why the Mischief server is going to be the best TLP server that Daybreak or Dogpaw has ever released, then watch this video to the end because I'm going to tell you why. This video is going to talk about where to hunt and what is so unique about it. As you know, it is a free trade server, but if that weren't enough, it is also a randomized loot server. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you. So the thing is, is what's really cool about this means that anything at the same level or similar level, we don't know the exact details yet, can drop the other person, other NPCs loot table. Why is that big? Let me start here with classic level um, group gear. So let's take a look at Pisgeon who drops a glowing black stone. This is one thing that farmers love to lock down and sell to everybody. Now it's going to be able to drop off Bristletoe who is in the southwest corner of North Karana. I've actually seen this guy before, so he's not that bad. Warbone Monk, haven't seen him. He may not be there, but uh, he may be. If they make it so it goes one level higher or lower, then the Orc Taskmaster can drop. An Orc Taskmaster, you guys have killed him a million times in Crush Prone, seen him all over the place. Also, these other um, mobs like Squall Sither, who you've never seen, can drop uh, loot on the Taskmaster too. But let's keep uh, going on and let's take a look at one of these I want to showcase here. I want to point out Rohotep right here. He has a very fast spawn time. He's one of those names that you know exactly where he's going to spawn. He spawns in the zombie camp or the undead camp right outside uh, the common lands tunnel in North Row. And the reason why he spawns so fast and you see him so many times, see him over and over and over is because he can spawn in one of like eight spots in that camp. And people clear that camp over and over and over and there's a lot of pick stones in North Row in the beginning. So what can he drop? He can drop the Lark, Witter, uh, Lark Twitter bow. And he can also drop a uh, bear tooth necklace. Not a big deal. And also the Minotaur ribcage. But if they expand his level, then possibly he can drop stuff from the Guano Harvester. Look at that. Guano Harvester is from Soyusek B. And he drops a large soiled bag, which is a weight reducing bag and cloak of shadows. That's just crazy. That's going to make it good. So if you never got the Guano Harvester and he's not easy to get because he's invisible and he walks through there, you can now get the thing. But if you can't get him off Rohotep, look at what happens here. You can get him off Emperor Crush. And look at this. Frog Glock, Gas Squire, Rune, Bone, Fork. Best resist item that early in the game that can fit in the slot, the range slot. It's crazy. So this rare item from this guy can drop on any of these here. So it's going to be good. Now let's go to one there's a lot of these you can take a look i will put the link for this in the description take your time and go through this but i want to show you one that i find that's very very interesting um okay let's go over this one here posh granite tomahawk this is another chrono farmer's uh, dream here but now look at all the uh, mobs that can drop it goblin jail master permafrost will be a cool place to go uh, you can see here uh, these other ones here and let's go to one that always drives everybody crazy let's skip there's a lot of good ones here like Lockjaw and whatever, but here you go, guys. Haddon, <laughs> Kino's Hills, Fishbone Earring. This, one of the worst camps ever. You could only get this item by buying it from somebody. And it was that same guy every time, that same guy who was making a living off selling the Fishbone Earring. Well, no more. That's all going to change because guess what? Upper Guck Froglock Summoner is going to get him. Let's drop it. Guess who? Undead Knight or Unrest. How many times has this guy gotten killed? He's killed so many times per day. And and you know how many uh, pick zones there are of Unrest? There's maybe 20, 30 pick zones of Unrest. But people are killing this guy over and over and over. So he is going to be able to drop um, the Fishbone Earring. And wouldn't that be cool getting it from him instead of having to pay for this guy here? Also, another person that's going to drop it is Singe. Another NPC, Singe is going to drop it. Nijin is going to drop it. How nice. Instead of getting looking for the black uh, tome silver rones or this flowing black robe, you can get a fishbone earring. And I take that any day off. Look at everybody in level 28. What do you want? Would you rather have their other loot or would you have the fishbone earring? I'll take the fishbone earring. So this guy doing the fishbone earring, totally out of business. Don't even come to the server because... These, there's going to be so many fishbone earrings out there from everybody else, and they're going to be selling at a really cheap price. And so now you've got a fishbone earring. You always wanted one, and you don't want to pay three, four chrono for them. You got it because I'm telling you, early on, this thing's like three, four, five chronos, and you know that's a lot of money right there. But now you can get it. You can enjoy the game without it. Okay, so now here's another one. Big level, level 30. And why is level 30? Check this out. Who do you have in this level? Bilge, Farfathom, Pearl, 
Kedge Totem and Reed Belt. Both awesome, awesome items. That can drop off these two guys in permafrost. These two guys are standing right next to each other. The High Priest Zaharn, uh, they're pretty close in there. And the Elite Honor, Honor Guard, Avenging Caitiff. And look at what else is in there. Charred Guardian Shield. The EXG, is that crazy or what? But even crazier, Quillmane. Oh my gosh, how many times have you ever seen Quillmane or yet got his feathered cloak? If you want to know why, I got a video on showing how his uh, flight path is, his pathing. It's really hard to find this guy. And not only that, people are just hunting him. Now this can drop and you need that Pegasus feather cloak. Ring of the Ancients can also drop out of there. Level 30 is going to be a grand time on this server. Look at that. Well, Ghoulbane, forget about that, but it can drop still. Okay, let's keep going because I want to get to the raid stuff really quick. Okay, so you're looking here, but there's a lot of good stuff. It just gets better and better, but let's skip all the way to level 42 because level 42 is the level of the frenzied ghoul who drops a flowing black silk sash. I can tell you right now, don't bother with the fierce impaler or that frenzied cauldron shark. They're rarer than anything. I've hardly ever seen them in as much time I've been in Kedge. They are super rare. But now it can drop from the Crusader. It can drop from the Sentinel. And guess who? The Kobold King. Everybody kills him so many times a day. Kobold King, Sentinel. You don't even have to go to Lower Guck. You can get the FBSS. So now you got four different drops that can drop the FBSS. And you got multiple pick zones that can drop it. So FBSS Farmer, you're out of business. Now it's going to be power to the little people. All you guys out there that are groupers that don't like the farmers, you can get the FBSS. Okay, so that's good. Let's go down and keep going down. Now it kind of gets a little, you know, pretty much the same. You know, you got all this stuff in the hole. All these guys are all about the same level, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so Cauldron Boil can drop undertow stuff, and same with all these other guys. This Loam, so it'd be nice to get this, but not a big deal. And these people out in the hole don't want to get the Kedge stuff, so not a big deal. But, but the moment you've been waiting for, the giant lizard in Ocean of Tears will drop the golden Afridi boots. We're sure of that now. Now, if they, they add it by add one level or take away one level, that'll even make this more fun. This camp, I'm going to tell you guys, is always, always owned by farmers. Just like when Velius comes out, Siren's Grotto is owned by that same farmer. This farmer is not totally out of business, but pretty darn close to it because I'll tell you, this lizard is killed so many times a day. In fact, the farmer can have uh, four picks of Nagafin's Lair. He can run four picks of this, but still you will get more lizards popping out in uh, Ocean of Tears. And a lot of people are out in Ocean of Tears too. So this farmer guy, he can't just sit in one spot because this this big dinosaur spawns on many, many parts of the island. He could be on the the, the west side, north side, east side. So farmer's not going to know and farmer's going to have to do it. So this is bringing power back to people. You can get gold in the Freedy Boots with the dinosaur at a minimum. Now, I don't know about Dark Assassin. If anybody knows, let me know. But that would be another one. Okay, now it's time to quickly go over to Raid Gear. Because what's important with Raid Gear is that mobs like the Maestro, who you know the Maestro is a bad boy. At level 50, if you're capped at level 50, is not going to be an easy fight. You need a full Raid group. But the Thunder Princess can be... At level 50, with just people in whatever gear, they can probably three group her. We've done it with three groups. And I've seen big raid guilds take down Finnegel with one group. It took them a long time to do it. it, took a couple hours to do it, but they can do it with one group. If they had two groups, they can take Finnegel down. So just think Finnegel and Thunder Princess are going to drop Maestro gear. That's crazy. So you can do this, just get another group together and take down the Thunder Princess, which is easy because you can fight her alone. Whereas Finnegel, you can't fight him alone. But Thunder Princess, I think, is super duper easy. Now, the next one, Protector of Sky. He was easy, too. He's another easy one. 18 people, we took Protector of Sky down. And Protector of Sky at level 50. So Protector of Sky will drop Nagafin. Look at all this loot he drops. You want Kazakh Thules, ne Amulet Necropotence? Don't kill him. You need a full raid to do this in Plane of Fear and break the Plane of Fear and it's going to take you a long time. Instead, just go ahead and knock off the Protector of Sky. No big deal. So look at that. Protector of Sky will be the one here. We've even killed Gorgolusk. Even though he's level 60, we had to have a bigger raid, but we killed Gorgolusk. And it would be nice if he dropped the stuff below him. Maybe they'll set it up where this raid mob will drop stuff below because as you can see, it's only Keeper of Souls. Well... You know, if they're the same, no big deal. But that's the plan right there. So you want to kill Finnegel, which 
not a lot of people like to kill him, but he's very, very easy. And you want to kill the Thunder Spirit Princess. Easiest level 53 mob in the game. I'm telling you, Mitigation Mighty, not going to help this little thing. Protector of Sky, easy. So two easy ones, and you're going to get this loot. So you get a small guild out there, a bunch of your friends together, and pull this off. You can get all this loot, which you never could get before. And once again, the farmers... They are not really set up to do this because a Chrono Farm is not going to be able to bring a 72 box team in there or 54 box team in there to kill Dread, Terror, and Fright, and so on and so on. You know, they may be able to kill Thunder Princess, but that's only like one time out of a week because they'll do it via Agent of Change. And Finigel, he spawns actually quite a bit, I have to say. So you can take him down also. But anyway, guys, hope this helps. If you have any comments, let me know um, any your favorite camps or any ideas. Let me know. But I want to do one more thing before we go. And we're going to talk about major traded items. This is the epics right here. So major tradable items, Ring of the Ancients, J-Boot stuff. And you see it right there. I'm going to go ahead and go like this. Next thing you want to look at is epic tradables. There's a lot in here and I don't want to read it all off. But you can go ahead and take a look at that yourself and see what it is. Some things, I guess they aren't tradable. But uh, in some cases, like the monk, most... Um, most of the stuff is tradable, but uh, turn and fight rewards are not. And that would make sense. I don't know. But they've done this because they looked on Throne of I and they figured out what is tradable, what isn't. So really good of this person to put up. I think it's Bobby Bick. Awesome job. I will put the link in the description. And guys, see you on that server. It's going to be great. The only thing we got to worry about is if the hamsters are going to die.